Hi, welcome back to the Rio City Lab. I am Filippi. We are well into our collective exercise to discuss the reuse of goods and materials in cities and regions. It's still time to participate, so if you want to join or to receive updates about the lab, please check the website make.reuse.city and you'll find options there to sign up or to subscribe. This is the third fragment of Reuse City, and this is a series of videos where I'm reporting on the origins of this lab. You may have seen the other videos where I describe the choice of focusing my PhD research on waste prevention, and I, ha and I have also described the two design research, design research studies I have conducted during my first year of work. So just a quick recap here. With the repair journey, I have identified decisions and behaviors people have regarding broken or unused things. And through interviews with practitioners, I have started working on an ecosystem mapping. Those two exercises allowed me to identify four main types of stakeholders potentially interested in reuse through repair and physical transformation. And that allowed me to brainstorm what was absent from the map or still underdeveloped. Those, uh, those findings turned into eight concept ideas that I will describe in this video. You can find a more detailed description of these concept ideas and the exercises that I did to, 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 to reach them on the web page that I made by the end of that phase of research, which is is.fe.me slash concepts. You can see this here, and I will post also in this video notes. Some of those ideas would require a whole lot, uh, you know, a whole new PhD project to be developed. You know, who knows, uh, a postdoc may be on my horizon. And others are there only to start a discussion and may never evolve into particular initiatives, but three or four of them are ideas that I'm trying to move forward in the Reuse City Lab and also in future activities of my research. You will probably identify some of them as I present them today in this video. And uh, the idea is to get some of those ideas and mix. I'm thinking of mixing two of them together and uh, making a more detailed and test those ideas, a more detailed version of them and test those ideas in the lab with participants. So I hope you can join us in this exercise. And let's go then into these eight concepts. The first of them uh, is the Universal Registry of Things, which would be an online database or an online uh, data source about information that allow people uh, to reuse second-hand goods and materials. It can be about who is the manufacturer of this or that product, what are the versions available, what kinds of materials are there in, where can I find service manuals, where are there repair shops or service shops, what is the end-of-life policy of that object or product, what are the spare parts, what are the tools needed to repair and to, or to recycle, to reuse them upcycle or reuse them, and examples of reuse, stories uh, of other people who have uh, successfully or unsuccessfully uh, reused those objects. I, we have already been discussing these ideas in the lab, uh, and I have some very interesting insights coming from participants, but I'll keep that to the documentation that is available uh, you can find the link to the GitHub repository where I'm keeping the documentation of the Rio City Lab on the website. The second concept idea that I have developed in uh, uh, an earlier phase of my research was point and reuse, which would be a mobile phone app or a website uh, through which people could identify, possibly through the camera, but also typing, and through other kinds of sensors as well could identify what is an object and how, uh, how, to reuse it, how to reuse it. And it would naturally be connected to the Universal Registry of Things. It could be an extension or a sort of interface for that. And uh, the idea is to create intelligent interfaces that would 
help not to replace the work of people who usually uh, repair or reuse materials, but to extend those abilities, to extend the skills of identifying that a potential, uh, that an object or a product has a potential for reuse. And the idea would be to allow citizens, and members of zero waste initiatives, repair professionals, uh, or anyone interested to quickly evaluate the potential value of an object. You would upload a picture or make a picture on your web or, or, or on your smartphone, and then uh, you could access all those informations. The third concept was save this thing. It would be a website, a georeferenced website uh, with uh, user rankings about repair professionals, zero waste initiatives, uh, such as you know, community repair, upcycling, swap shops, but also craftspeople, hardware stores, maker spaces, charity shops, recycling points. So everything that would be in cities or you know, located in the physical world that could help people reuse materials. The fourth concept, and then this is another another category. The first three ones were about uh, properties and data about uh, materials. And then there is this category that is going, uh, uh, going to the city. So the fourth concept was uh, make waste visible, I called it. So it would be about, you know, inviting artists, designers and activists through residency programs, hackathons and commissions to inform local populations about the volume of waste generated, reused and recycled. This is, um, this is to face, this is, this is an idea to address the, um, the trends that I saw in smart cities uh, when, it, when, it, when it's about waste management. There is this trend of making waste disappear as quickly as possible and make it hidden from the public eyes. And my take is that instead of making waste disappear, we should be making it visible so that local societies are aware of the amount of waste that is generated. And then uh, this would help raise awareness and uh, possibly create initiatives that make sense and people understand the reason to develop these initiatives to reuse materials instead of expecting things to be solved uh, quickly and seamlessly and, you know, making waste disappear. The other, uh, the other concept that I have created was data on reuse. So it would be an open data set that could integrate and make available data about different kinds of reuse of materials in urban environments, including household, community and local initiatives. It is... Uh, in a sense, it is related to the universal registry of things, but it's not individualized, it's not particularized through objects, but rather to flows of things in cities. It can be also related to initiatives such as the, the repair data set created by the Restart project, but again, their data set is mostly focused on community repair events. And uh, what I'm trying to identify is uh, or to make visible and to make uh, known to the wider public is the amount of materials that are being reused in cities. There is very, there are there are very interesting data sets in different parts of the world about the materials that are collected through waste management. And uh, I have interviewed for my ecosystem mapping, I have interviewed a data scientist that works with this data, particularly in the UK. So that person uh, evaluates and creates data visualization for the, the, the flows of materials that are collected in households and then taken to material recovery facilities and then uh, sent to recycling or other kinds of reuse. But there is very little being created in terms of data about reuse. So what is the volume of materials that gets uh, upcycled? What is the volume of materials that gets recirculated through secondhand shops or through 
uh, online marketplaces for used materials and objects. And in a sense, uh, we are lacking in information to inform uh, or to, to provide policymakers with the, the right measures. So when, whenever, you know, because of the fact that there is a lot of uh, information being generated about waste, it sometimes may feel easier for policymakers to address that, you know, to work only on uh, the efficiency of waste collection in households and the efficiency of taking that waste to uh, recovery facilities. But as there is very little information about reuse, uh, this may contribute to the fact that public policies very seldom address reuse as a, a proper way to, to, to deal with discarded materials. So the idea of creating an open data set about reuse would be to, 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 to show, to demonstrate that there, is, there are significant, uh, significant initiatives that promote the reuse of materials and they should be taken into account uh, when developing public policy for uh, waste and discarded materials. This is another idea, another concept idea. It would be, uh, I call it reuse bin, it would be uh, like curbside bins to collect waste, but it would collect materials to be reused. So they would allow citizens to donate unused objects and the equipment, this bin, would generate a tracking code that would allow donors to learn where the objects are directed to, what is made of them, and what are the social and economic impacts they have. That comes also from the perception that sometimes people want to donate things, but they want to ensure that uh, their donation will revert to social benefits somehow, or to economic benefit, or to ecological benefit, to environmental benefit. And they are sometimes unsure whether they should donate something that they don't know what uh, will be made of, or they want or, or they decide to keep those things until they find a proper use and um, by doing that by not donating they avoid uh, providing you know social or economical benefit by donating their materials so this kind of equipment would help people uh, and, and, and it has somehow a relationship with trust. It would make people trust that the materials they are donating are not being misused and are actually providing benefit instead of being just, you know, thrown away or uh, sold uh, by people who don't actually need them. Then the seventh uh, concept idea that I brought from my, my earlier phases of research and that also connects with other things that I've done in the past was uh, what I'm calling here the transformation lab or transformation shops. So it would be the plan and you know a blueprint to set up urban infrastructure for reuse and upcycling of materials. It would have a recommendation of equipment, data sources and processes to allow uh, what could be called a kind of advanced version of community repair workshops. And then the idea by promoting and by providing this kind of blueprint would be to assemble and create new devices that allow the reuse of materials. So instead of setting up, for instance, fab labs that are fabrication laboratories whose vocabulary brings a lot of, uh, uh, of you know, biases from industrial production, uh, the idea would be to create labs that would be available, possibly through public support, uh, would be available for citizens to take their things to be transformed. And that transformation can be repair, you know, you can bring, uh, you can bring uh, uh, household equipment to be repaired on these shops and you could learn from others to repair yourself. Or you could uh, be taking things that cannot be repaired anymore or that you don't want to repair, but you want to upcycle or transform into other things. And that's, that's, there, there, 
there's a deeper explanation about uh, why I'm using the term transform instead of repair or reuse or making. The, that's another, uh, another term that emerged in the last decades, you know, the maker spaces. And um, it has relations to all, to, to all of those practices. But what I, what I want to promote is this discussion about uh, using technologies and using equipment, using tools uh, from the most basic tools up to the most advanced digital making tools to transform things into other things uh, and to transform objects into usable uh, tools or equipment. And the idea is to, 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 to create this kind of boundary between makerspaces, repair shops, recycling facilities, and uh, fab labs. And this is, I think, one of the, the concepts that I will bring into further phases of my research, particularly towards the end of my PhD project when I have to uh, think in terms of policy and how to impact on real world scenarios. And then finally, uh, the eighth concept idea that I have created last year was the reuse commons. And that is, in a sense, it's a little more conceptual because it's about governance. But it can, and this is one of the ideas that I think I need, you know, three to five years to, to, to develop properly. But the way I see the reuse commons would be in the form of a multi-stakeholder local body governing the reuse of discarded materials. And it could integrate, you know, reuse cabins, lost and found services, community reuse events and, and, and infrastructure and tracking of donations and also other, uh, other initiatives that we find along the way. So this is, I think, would be my... My, my kind of long-term uh, horizon of developing the reuse commons as a sort of urban service that could be deployed to different localities and would help people relate uh, people, organizations, uh, community centers to relate through the reuse of materials and all of the opportunities for education, for social inclusion, for economic development that, uh, that stem from that. So this, in essence, so this was the last concept idea, and these are the concepts that I have created in, the f in, the f in further phases of, uh, in, sorry, in previous phases of my research. And um, with this, I, f I think I'm, I'm done with presenting my previous work. And I hope to bring all of those ideas into new phases of research, particularly through participation of, uh, of people in the Reuse City Lab. So I welcome everyone to join us, to sign up, and to uh, at least to subscribe for updates by going to make.reuse.city. Thanks again for your attention. Talk to you soon, hopefully.